This article was originally published Thursday in the Post's World Cup newsletter. Sign up to receive smart analysis, opinions, viewing guides and more every match day through the final on July 15. This has been the longest stretch between matches since the World Cup began. I'm okay, really, and I hope you are, too. Sunlight was a shock at first, but I adjusted after a few hours. I'm back inside now, and ready for a stretch run that promises to be thrilling from the very first game. Of the eight teams remaining, four have won the World Cup before. But only two have won in my lifetime, and I'm 51. There have only been three first-time champions in the past 40 years. The four best teams are all jammed onto one side of the bracket. They play Friday in what, on paper, looks like the best day of matches in the tournament so far. The games will showcase some of the best attacking players on the planet, nagging injuries allowing, and the best defense in the tournament. Here we go. All times Eastern quarterfinals, France vs Uruguay 10 a.m., Nizhny Novgorod FS1, Telemundo quarterfinals, Brazil vs Belgium 2 p.m. Kazan, FS1, Telemundo The Preview, France vs. Uruguay Uruguay has been solid from the start, and the French are coming on strong. Both are former champions, France much more recently, and both have balance, depth and a so far alchemic mix of young and old. Uruguay has conceded only one goal in four games. It features the best remaining centre-back pairing in the tournament, Atletico Madrid teammates Diego Godin and Jose Maria Jimenez, who can both stifle and score. The issue is Uruguay's health, specifically the injury status of the world-class strike partnership of Edinson Cavani, who plays with and against a lot of the French players in club competition for Paris Saint-Germain and Luis Suarez, who will face FC Barcelona teammate Samuel Umtiti, a French centre-back. After scoring twice against Portugal, Cavani limped off the field and had to be substituted late in the game. Suarez limped out of practice this week. It is unclear whether either will play, but of the two, Suarez is the more likely to do so. This Uruguay team, though, has proved to be much more than star strikers and stout defense. Manager Oscar Tabares remade the team after a poor start in qualification, bringing several young midfielders into a stale attack. Juventus's Rodrigo Bentancur is 21 and already a standout holding midfielder for La Celeste. Lucas Torreira is 22, played last season for Sampdoria in Italy and may be on his way to Arsenal. He tour apart the Portuguese midfield, winning tackles and creating chances. That contest in the middle of the field should be among the best in the tournament along with the Belgium-Brazil match a few hours later. Bentanker will face France's Paul Pogba, both of whom are one yellow card away from a one-game suspension, which would be for the semi-finals if it comes Friday. Pogba, a mercurial if sometimes breathtaking talent, helped stretch out the Argentine midfield in the previous game, allowing the French forward space to use their formidable speed. But it is N'Golo Conte, diminutive and ubiquitous, who is the key to the French attack. The extraordinary amount of ground he covers allows Pogba and others to push forward without fear of being caught too far out on defense. Conte is there, he's always there, wherever there happens to be. Uruguay's defense will have to account for the speed of Kylian Mbappe in the guile of Antoine Griezmann, who can also run past most defenses. If goals come, celebrations will follow. And in the national cradle of the mime, they will be choreographed. Manager Didier Deschamps, a World Cup winner in 1998, also uses Olivier Giroud, slow of foot but huge of head, as the target in the middle in case the defense decides to pack it in against an otherwise fast front line. That could make for an interesting, open contest and goals at both ends. Brazil vs. Belgium There will not be another game in this tournament with more talent on the field. Philippe Cochinho of Brazil and Eden Azar of Belgium are two of the five best attacking midfielders on the planet. Belgium's Kevin De Bruyne also belongs on that list. 
and their are name are in Romulu Lukaku, forwards cut from very different cloth, and is a whippet fast and thin recent best player in the world, finalist who unfortunately at times seems made of sugar. Brazil's Neymar Sambas passed Mexico's defense. Sergey Gritz, Associated Press, Lukaku is a giant contending for the tournament's golden boot who can score on the ground with speed, in the air with his head and from distance with a lethal left foot. Lukaku scores and scores. Hassan Amar, Associated Press, at 33, Brazil centre-back Thiago Silva has a difficult day ahead, given the speed and wit of the Belgian offence, it will be made far harder without Casemiro, the holding midfielder destroyer who gives a sometimes delicate Brazilian team a harder spine. He's out for yellow card accumulation, no surprise to anyone who has watched him play for Real Madrid. Brazil has an excellent, if less physical, backup in Fernandinho. He, too, is 33, and 7 years older than Casemiro. But he knows how De Bruyne, in particular, plays, the two share the midfield at Manchester City, the Premier League champion. Will all this talent cancel itself out in the middle of the field? Or will it be a goal fest? Who knows? But both of these offensive powerhouses are the backed by excellent goalkeepers, Belgium's Thibaut Courtois and Brazil's Alisson. Overall scoring leaders Harry Kane, England, 6 Romelu Lukaku, Belgium, 4 Cristiano Ronaldo, Portugal, 4 Edinson Cavani, Uruguay, 3 Denis Cherishev, Russia, 3 Diego Costa, Spain, 3 Artem Dezuba, Russia, 3 Kylian Mbappe, France, 3 Yerry Mina, Colombia, 3 A time for bittersweet goodbyes 3 quarters of the teams that arrived in Russia are out of the tournament. They leave behind pride and disappointment, confusion and frustration. Now is the time for goodbyes, some forever, some for another four years. So ciao. To the managers. From a team to its remarkable fans. To the retiring great ones. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. We've picked 35 photos to sum up at Anderson Iesta it's a career, to thank him. Those would be 35,000 words. And do you know what? It's still not enough because Andres is exceptional. A replaceable eternal picked out twitter.com slash row 5 at OGH, Selección Española de Football, at Set Football, July 3, 2018 to longtime fans from a longtime fan favorite. And from a continent to a team, one of the tournament's most popular. Read more about the World Cup, the Wimbledon men's final and the World Cup final are on a collision course. The World Cup final will include one of these teams, England, Croatia, Sweden, Russia. Really? Opinion, the real World Cup losers, the Russian people England knows how to adjust its World Cup expectations. But winning wasn't part of the plan.